How do commercial real estate prices drop? I'm Tim Diesel, commercial real estate consultant. Today, I want to answer a question that came in. How do prices of commercial real estate property drop? And it's m many of us know this, but if you don't know, you might get something out of it. If you do know, just don't watch this video, watch something else. So the, uh, the biggest thing that's going to alter uh, commercial real estate prices are obviously rates and financing, right? Uh, if rates are going up, property values are going down because the spread to borrow money uh, shrinks a little bit, right? So let's look at it from a perspective of you've owned a property for five years. If you've owned a property for five years, you probably have financing on it for maybe 10 or 15, 20 years, who knows? As rates go up, your property is not affected directly because your rate is fixed most of the time. Maybe it's probably fixed for five years or three years or it has some kind of term on it. That doesn't affect you very much. Here's where it kind of changes things a little bit. Let's suppose after five years, you want to sell your property and the buyer um, is looking to get financing. And let's keep this simple. He's going to put 20% down, regular bank financing, and he comes up with um, a 4% interest rate. That's great. He likes it. He's good. No problem with the property. Now, let's suppose the sale didn't go through for whatever reason. And you want to hold the property for another six months because you have to try to find a buyer. Uh, you got to clean some things up. And now let's suppose the new buyer is getting 5% on that interest rate. It's not that your property goes down because that individual or that group is paying more. It's because the return for them, maybe borrowing money, is not the same, right? So, because if you think about it, if everyone was paying cash for all these properties, it would be a little bit different. And the cap rate formula doesn't take financing into effect. It assumes everybody owns their property. A couple things change when you're buying a property, right? The property taxes go up because most of the time somebody's owned the property for five or 10 or 20 years, the property taxes are going to change when you buy it because uh, it's not the same as it was. So put that in there. You put that in the equation. Then the other thing usually are the interest rates and the financing you're using. So as rates go up, property values go down just because the cap rates have to change a little bit. It's just the way it is because there's not going to be very much room for that investor, right? And you might argue like, well, no, I don't want to uh, reduce the price of my asset, whatever the case is. The truth is, why would anyone not get a return on the investment? See, there comes a point where, and depending on how long you've been doing this, there comes a point where investing in real estate or a business or whatever you're doing Look, you're, you're going after yield, right? You want that return. If bank interest rates are at 4 and 5%, it doesn't make sense. Why would you get into real estate, I mean, even to do anything? Why would you just leave your money in the bank and get that return? So the right now, we're far away from that. But you got to remember, 15, 20 years ago, it was, a little, it was safe to have your money in there to get 5 6% on, on, on your um, money market savings or whatever it is. Now, those uh, real estate returns, you can call it, let's say they're 6% and, and just, just average. They're 6 7% um, depending on um, whatever market you're in. Well, you can't go to the bank and get some kind of bond or CD or something and, and get a 7% return. It's just not going to happen. But there is going to be a time where the rates go up so much that your real estate value is not as attractive anymore. So you're going to have to make it more appealing. Now, this is more of a broad overview. I don't want you guys to go out there and, and start. I'm just trying to give you a, a general concept. As rates go up, property values do go down. And the, that's the biggest reason. Even though they're technically not calculated with financing, most of the time they're purchased with financing. Unless you're uh, maybe doing a 1031 exchange or you got a bunch of cash. So just depending on, on some of these things, bank financing is usually attached to it. Uh, seller financing many times, right? So I hope that helped clear things up. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.